Merci beaucoup. Uh... Thank you very much for worrying about our interpreter colleagues who are here today with us. And, of course, interpreters work in all kinds of other multilingual, multilingual meetings. So what I'm going to do now is give the floor over to Balash. Thank you very much. That's obviously a very important question. Now, obviously, there are a lot of uh, uh, technical issues that you raise, and I'm going to try to give you as broad an answer as I can. The European Commission is aware of the, uh, the impact of the coronavirus on the community of freelance interpreters. The drop-off in meetings by the Commission um, has been a problem. Uh, freelance interpreters were paid up until the 31st of May. Their contracts were on it up until the 31st of May. So there has been an impact, and the Commission has taken a number of measures to mitigate some of these problems. So there was the idea of advance payments for June and July, months during which the demand has dropped significantly. At the same time, the Commission's interpretation service has done much to bring about the best conditions in order to ensure multilingual communication in meetings and in order to boost the level of contracts for freelance interpreters. The flagship example here, I believe, So there's the um, coronavirus pledging conference in May. I could also talk about the fact that Interactio technology was installed in a number of meeting rooms and technical conditions are being improved. And there are other meetings involving interpreters in June and July as well. Uh If I've understood, your question focused mainly on the rights of freelance interpreters to um, unemployment benefits, either under the current status or under the Belgian regime, or freelance interpreters in other member states, because I don't know if all freelance interpreters are necessarily based in Belgium. <laughs> 